Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from RVTutors.com and welcome to this video on titration calculations and this is the first video in a series of videos that look into calculating uh, concentrations in moles and volumes etc etc using a titration. So in this video we're going to go through uh, a very simple example uh, of how you calculate the concentration of a substance uh, using a titration. Uh, we're going to go through a worked example, I'm going to use a diagram as well and give you some uh, little pointers to watch out for them, pitfalls to make sure that you don't fall in them. Okay, so let's crack on. So it says, in a titration, 21.4 centimetres cubed of 0.2 moles per dm cubed HCl was needed to neutralise 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. And what we've got to do is calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide, which is on there. So uh, I'm going to go through this and show you as a setup, as a diagram. And um, sometimes that helps to visualize this type of thing. So you have your burette, which is over here. And inside your burette, you have hydrochloric acid. Now, we know two things about hydrochloric acid. We know its volume. So we need a 21.40 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. Um, and the strength of the acid was 0 0.20 moles per decimeter cubed. Uh, and this sits inside the burette. Now, in the conical flask, we have the um, sodium hydroxide. Now, this is 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Inside here, you would also have, just for the practical wise, you would also have an indicator inside here. And this would indicate when your uh, end point has been reached. And that is obviously when you would stop titrating uh, and then measure the volume of acid that you added to neutralize your sodium hydroxide. So here's our question. Um, and the first thing we need to do really um, is to write out an equation. And um, sometimes in the exam, they give you an equation um, for the experiment that we're obviously doing. In this case, we haven't been given one because it's a pretty simple one to write. Uh, so we're gonna write this out first. So um, we're gonna use, I think we use blue to write this out. So you can see we've got uh, HCl and sodium hydroxide. So we're just going to write these down here, put that on there. So this is sodium hydroxide, uh, and that's gonna react with hydrochloric acid, uh, and this is gonna produce sodium chloride. This is your salt plus water. Now you've gotta make sure this is balanced because the balance part is really important. But in this case, this one's actually pretty well reasonably balanced. So um, you don't need to add anything onto it. So the next thing we need to do is to try and work out exactly what we've got. Um, we've been given loads of numbers here, and it's trying to get them organized into different parts to make sure you're clear. Uh, and one of the rules that I like to use when we're working out titrations is, if in doubt, work out the moles, and you'll see why uh, later on. So we're gonna start and split these things up. So we're gonna need a red pen, I think, for this to make sure it's clear. So we're gonna find out the volume. So for HCl, we know the volume, and the volume is 21.40. Now, there's a problem there, because this is in centimetres cubed. And in chemistry, we measure things in decimetres cubed. Um, so for that reason, you need to be able to convert that into uh, decimetres cubed. Now, if you're not sure on how to convert uh, units, so for example, going from centimetres cubed to decimetres cubed, then I have done a video on converting units. So if you want a quick refresher on that, then just click on the link below. But all in all, um, the volume uh, to convert it is actually dividing by a thousand. So one way in which we can write that as a quick method is by just putting times by 10 to the minus three. That means divide by a thousand. So uh, that just makes it just a little bit easier to work out. So, so we've got our volume and we then need to work out uh, our concentration. Our concentration is 0 0.2. Uh, we don't need to do anything uh, with that, so that's 0 0.2 moles per dm cubed. Let's get our units on there. Dm cubed, uh, this is it. decimeters cubed, so that's your volume. Uh, and the number of moles, um, we actually don't know. Um, we're going to work them out later on. So this is actually the first thing, if in doubt, work out the moles. Now, the reason why we use these three is because um, when you're calculating the moles of something, you need the concentration and volume. Now, if you're not sure on how on the mole equations uh, to do with solutions and solids, etc., you really do need to know them because they are so, so vital for all of chemistry, mole calculations. So uh, if you're not sure really on the mole uh, equations, then I have done a video on that as well. So just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video. So volume, concentration, moles. We're going to do exactly the same for sodium hydroxide as well. So the volume, put that there. So the volume of sodium hydroxide, we were told is 25 centimeters cubed. Again, 
the same reason over here, this is 25.00, uh, two decimal places just to keep it consistent. Uh, we need to divide by 1,000 to get it into decimeters cubed. So times by 10 to the minus 3 means exactly the same thing. Okay, so again, that's in decimeters, decimeters cubed. Okay, uh, the concentration uh, of sodium hydroxide, we don't know. That's what we need to work out. That's the concentration there. So I'm just going to put a question mark on there. Uh, and moles, uh, we will work out in a minute. So uh, there's our different um, equations. Now, the first thing, like I say, we need to work out the moles. So you can see here that we've got volume, concentration, and moles. Now, to work out the moles, all we do is we do concentration times by volume. So you can see here that we've got 0.2 uh, multiplied by 21.40 times by 10 to the minus 3. Now, if you put that into your calculator, we should get 4.28 times by 10 to the minus 3. Uh, and that's the number of moles, that's mole. Okay, so now we know the number of moles of acid. The equation now comes into it. So you can see here that we've got a one-to-one -one equation. And actually, because we know the moles of one substance, we can work out the number of moles of any substance in our equation. Because our equation is all one-to-one to one-to-one, -to -one -to -one, um, we need to work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles here is exactly the same as the number of moles up here because we've got one-to-one -one ratio. It's the same number. If this had a two in front of it, all you would do is you would double this number. And you put that there. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's just exactly the same number of moles. 4.28 times by 10 to the minus 3 moles. Okay. So now we've worked that out. Uh, we can then use the same equation here that we used here to work out moles. Except this time we're going to rearrange it. So in this case the uh, concentration is the number of moles. This divided by the volume which is this. So if we put that into our calculator we should get a number of 0 0.17. Uh, and this is moles per dm cubed. So there's our concentration of our sodium hydroxide. So our final answer, 0 0.17 moles per decimeters cubed. Now, a crucial thing as well, if you notice, this answer is two decimal places. The reason why we give this to two decimal places is because all the other numbers in here have all been to two decimal places, put the zero on the end there. So they're all two decimal places, so therefore your answer should reflect the precision of the numbers that they've given you. So in this case, they're all two. Uh, but it's worth checking as well, because sometimes they might ask for a specific degree of precision in terms of significant figures or decimal places. But um, there we go, that's it. Not too traumatic. Bye-bye.